Wow. This is about a pot. Can you even believe it? Wow, nicely done, guys. Good to see you. I can't believe, say, I can't believe you guys showed up. You guys just played last we night. Big, we had a big night last night, and, uh, and apparently April just didn't make it out of El Cajon last night. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, Mary is here to talk about it. I don't even know where Mary is on this, so maybe somebody can turn Mary's mic on. But Mary Bird Godwin, our den mother here yes. on On the Air, of course. Um, yeah, hey guys. And, and of course, so yeah, big night Great last night. Great show last night, yeah. Lots of people. Kicking off the whole season for yeah. El Cajon Concert Series. Is it, is it, um, how many people would you say were there? Like 2,000 people? Yeah. Oh, about, yeah. yeah easy. That was the biggest crowd we've seen out there. And I don't even, is that like the town square yeah. of El Cajon? Is that That's what that thing is? That's the place. Is? And they, they built a new stage for us, uh, <laughs> for us <laughs> personally. <laughs> um, there's, a, no. there's so many shows out this summer, though, so everyone's no. got to go check them out. El we Cajon have another one tonight, shows. by the way. We have a private party private tonight. Private party. But, well, and we don't do private parties. But, you know, Jesse Lozano, mm -hmm. he, he hit us up for a fundraiser. How do you uh, say no to Jesse when he's wearing Jesse. a leopard? I think he did it on the air. <laughs> yeah, so he, he did. He's wearing a leopard skin freaking, you know, Jansen separate thing <laughs> from the beach. I mean, it was ridiculous. There's but, a lot going on in San Diego. I mean. Oh, there is. What's, yeah. are, who plays next up there? Isn't Darren Greatly going to play? Darren Greatly's coming up. That's great. Uh, Heart of Rock and Roll. A lot of people that have been on the stage are playing this summer. Oh, are they really? Yeah. I'd like I to go out and see Heart of Rock and Roll and yeah. Darren Greatly. So good. Exactly. So that's the El Cajon concert. I don't know how you get there. Downtownelcajon.com, I think, is right. where you can go. You just go um, the list. 8 East. Eight, yeah, no kidding. Eight, eight. No, listen, I had to leave. What was our sound check yesterday? Five o'clock? I had to leave like, uh, I had to leave like, um, I don't know, 2 p.m. <laughs> I, I barely made it. No, it wasn't that bad. It, it was not as bad as I anticipated. By the way, Mary. Yes. Big day tomorrow for you. It's Mother's Day tomorrow. My, <laughs> That's a true mother that they forget that it's Mother's Day. Did you really forget? You know, it just, it's not a day I can Don't remember. Don't you do I, something for your mother down at the San Diego Yacht Club or something like that? Every yes, year? Or have yes, you not yes. We celebrate. Oh, she's going to scramble after mom. the show. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> mom, sorry. I love you. Hey, before we let you out here, can you please uh, <laughs> talk up the uh, very generous donations that we received? Yeah, uh, we got to thank our KUSI viewers because they are donating like crazy yeah. to your mm -hmm. LLS campaign. Right. Sully, you guys know Sully's up for Man of the Year. Yes. yes. Leukemia and Lymphoma when you say that, Man we, of the Year. From now on, when you say, say Man of the Year again. Man of the Year. <laughs> Thank you. But we, we need the donations to keep coming. And if yeah. you put KUSI in the in the donor field or description yeah. field, right. you get entered to win a VIP experience to be right here on the wow. set with the Ooh, Sully Band and hey. you guys. Which wow. means you which means you get a you uh, means you get some corn nuts and a uh, and a <laughs> and food a, truck and a half of uh, beer with a, in a solo cup. And you get to sit up in a club. <laughs> and we're gonna throw in a Sully Band hat. Wow. You don't know this, but we're throwing in okay. a hat. Wow. By, by the way, these hats these hats are quality hats. They're made by Melon. Uh, I, I don't know if it's Mellon Headwear, but Mellon, M-E-L-L-I-N. -E 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 Mellon.com, yeah. The best baseball cap on the planet. It's actually Lauren Finney's husband who founded the company. Uh, Brian Finney McDonald, yes. um, as I like to call him. But yeah, fantastic hats. And by the way, Brian, if you're watching, can we get some more hats? We're glad, happy to pay. I want all, the all, new colors and stuff like that. Because I saw Ernie Hahn with a custom yeah. uh, custom hat. we got to get it before It's Ernie. like, dude. How did Ernie get in there before I did? He said, a, in fact, Ernie calls us, hey, I got, a, I got a Wonderfront hat for you. I go, is it a melon hat? Oh, yeah, yeah, I just called him a couple weeks ago. He's got, you called him a couple of weeks ago and got the hat. So, Brian, step up here. I need some hats. And Lauren had, Lauren had a great week. She interviewed Tom Cruise on Wednesday. Yeah, so did Jesse. I can't wait to yeah. see if Jesse actually took our advice from last week and wore a flight suit. We had it, uh, sit, we had it shipped to him. No kidding? Yeah, Wouldn't we had it, it shipped that, to him. He's just the type of guy that would show up in a flight suit with Maverick on the thing <laughs> for him. I have so. one more thing before yes, you let ahead. me go. Go ahead. That KU, or KUSI anchors are going to be at Monarch Tuesday, May 17th, for a celebrity bartender oh, that's night right. yeah, we're to raise money. money for your leukemia and lymphoma. Okay, yeah. We got Liz Alvarez, Mark Mathis, Logan Burns is going to be there, Teresa Can Sardina. I this? Wow. Yeah. Um, since Tommy talked me, Tommy and Lauren talked me into this dang thing. Uh, listen, it's a fantastic cause, and I and, and I and I'm I'm fully committed, and we're not just going to win, we're going to crush. So we'll, uh, no, you guys know in the background, like this is not even fun. This is like it's it's. I've hired people, I've got staff, I got trucks, I got vehicles, I got fighter pilots. We're we're raising money, but uh, have you cut a ten thousand dollar check yet or something like that? Since you, you know what, I have, but I post dated it. For a years. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. thank you very much. All right, very good. So uh, we'll be seeing Mary later in the program, right, or or not? Hang out, hang out in the show. Hey, we got a great show. We do have a great And we have a great guest host. As a matter of fact, I'd like to bring in 
the great guest host, longtime San Diego broadcaster, the iconic <laughs> sports <laughs> broadcaster, Mike Costa. Wait a minute. Am I, am I really <laughs> hearing the drum beat for lips like sugar? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys realize that you can sing any 80s song to MC Hammer's uh, uh, Can't Touch This? I, I can, we can, we should do this tomorrow or tonight at the gig because I can sing any 80s song. Yeah. Don't turn around. Uh -oh. No, that's, uh, there's a hundred songs from the 80s, only the 80s, that you can do when you sing that. Uh, fantastic. Well, I'm uh, glad Mike's here because, Mike, I remember when you were just part of a promo team. That's right. At Star 100.7, and now look at you. I know. It's a, you, you, you eat enough dirt, you suck enough fumes, you're going to make it eventually. Did you hear his big news, though? What? He is now the permanent co-host on the nationally syndicated Big Biz Show. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you, you, you do mean, know what you're, he does know what he's talking about because I saw the car he's driving up in. Yeah, he's, yeah. Well, here's the other thing too though. The, 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 this part that Rusty Nails played in the Big Biz Show, um, no one had a blank stare when I was talking business like Rusty Nails. <laughs> Mike Costa. That's, the Thank you. that's a big deal. Like you know the, the term mouth breather? Yeah. That's him. Yeah. That's good stuff. So. No, it's great. Ouch. No, it's great to have you though. It's, it's great to be here. And, and, you're, and, you are, it's, and you're a perfect co-host. for. And me. he knows all three guests. As a matter of fact, let's bring in some of the guests okay, right let's go. now. Let's roll. This dude has been around San Diego radio for years. His podcast, The Dave and Jeff Show, is widely popular. We couldn't get Jeff, but we wow. got Dave Palais. <laughs> Anytime we use a song with the word Dave devil in it. It's a great yes. thing when you can uh, do a walk-on song that has the word devil in it. Well, Perfect. that's, unfortunately, that's what Happy Mother's Day, pal. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you, Dave Pallet. Why did what? you choose that song? Oh, because everyone in this town calls me Diablo. And I got God. stuck with this because when the rumor was the Chargers were trying to get a stadium, I told everybody on the radio, the Chargers are leaving. And uh -huh. I said, I know they're leaving. If I have a pretty good source and they're leaving, and people for some reason didn't like the news, and they're like, "You're the devil. You're yeah. the you're Diablo." Diablo, and it never never stops. Well, maybe, it's the, so, maybe it's the black hat, the black Raiders, uh, uh, <laughs> black shorts, and the black yeah, Converse. That, maybe, maybe, that's, maybe that's it. Could be it. Not sure. And I love it. that you still do the show with Jeff. Yeah, the Dave and Jeff show. But what I love most is that you're a baseball high school coach. Yeah, we're doing doing a lot of baseball, and uh, I, I love baseball. And uh, obviously, one of your guests coming on is a huge baseball guy in this town. But yeah. as far as uh, for me, I've been doing you know travel ball and little league. And where are you coaching at? Right now, I'm at Benito Vista High School, yeah. and um, great group of kids. The kids are always great, you know. So. You it's the parents, see... isn't it? It's the parents. <laughs> it's the top. I can't say anything. It's the parents. Yeah, it <laughs> but you, you love you to see it. kids chasing yeah. their dream. And so when you're when you're young and you have your dreams ahead of you, there's nothing like it. Watching have kids have you coached anyone that made it? Uh, you know what? I have a bunch of kids right now that when we started up uh, in 2010, I started travel ball, and we grabbed a bunch of kids in the neighborhood that couldn't make other travel ball teams that nobody wanted, and we put that group of kids together. 12 of the 13 kids are now professional baseball players. Really? Yeah, it's amazing that wow. the kids that people said, I don't see anything in them, all of a sudden they're kids that are professional baseball players. And they're in the minor leagues now, but some of them hey. are very, very close to making it to the majors. And oh, good. so age-wise, you know, we're, we're happy we've had more than 50 scholarship athletes and, and just, just great kids as always. And that's the Bears, right? That's the California Bears. I got a question. So two sports radio guys, I used to appear on your shows every time yes. you guys had a money question oh, yeah. about sports was like, how are you guys trying to squeeze that thing in the door there? Because I never saw how money fit with business or with, with business fit with sports. Did you guys ever get to work together or did you just work? Oh, did, my did God. You, did you, we did. Did you yeah, really? We did. That's where the animosity and the hate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, we had such a great time along with Jeff Dotseth when we were doing, we did yeah. that show together. Jeff's a great guy. I like great, Jeff, too. Great guy. But, but wait a minute. When I see you guys with Paul Diablo Rudy, in the when I, when I, wait a minute. When I see you guys with Paul Rudy on KUSI, you guys both, you know, make fun of each other. Yes. Where'd that come from? Well, you know, I dated Dave's wife, <laughs> <laughs> and wow. uh, started early. 
about 30 years ago, I guess, huh? Wow. No, we just, it, 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 I know I have him up against the wall because he's a coach, he's a high school coach, and he can't respond to a lot of the stuff I say on Twitter. So I'm just Because he's busy? Because he's busy or he'll get fired. Yeah, I'll get fired. So, um, but we just, you know, we just started, we started doing the radio show together, and we just started ripping on each other like the first day. And it was, it was my, ma mainly Jeff and I ganging up on him. Awesome. And he's such a good sport, and he's such a great guy. And we both share the same birthday. Yeah. Wow. So what is? when's your birthday? November thirteenth. November thirteenth. Wow. Yeah. So it's it's just been it's, it's oh, been a comedy of errors. Oh, El Dia de Diablo. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. November. <laughs> yeah, I do have a lot of friends in East Lake, Joe Loera, yeah. uh, Paul Segura. They all love you. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I think more people love you down there than love me. That's for sure. Yeah. I, everywhere I go, I moved in East Lake in two thousand two. And the number one question was, do you know Tommy? Oh, and my God, that. enough of this. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Mutual uh, but you're, you're doing great things. Oh, thank let's, you very let's bring in the next right. guest. Here we go. Good to I work with this dude all the time on KUSI's Good Morning San Diego. I've known him for years when we used to talk about girls. Now we talk about our grandkids. Ladies wow. and gentlemen, Please. Jason Austell. Here he comes. <laughs> Good to see you, pal. Good to see you, man. Love I always you, see everybody doing. I always see you through the Zoom camera. I never get to see you in person. You know? I know. Yeah. Now we're getting back into person, though. I'm never getting down that side. I mean, it's so you're not nice and cozy, and you're uh, you know you're wearing your board shorts and your sport coat, looking like I'm a businessman. <laughs> and they all think it's from here because they got this picture of this place right behind me. Yeah. I am so far away from here and so far away from Cape Sayo. I'm right in my home studio, and then uh, you know get done and pfft, and then I'm I'm good. I'm already busy. You know what, Jason? I love the fact that when we used to know each other like 20, 30 years ago, we used to talk about girls that we knew. Yes, now, we did. Now what do we talk about? We talk about girls we know. <laughs> <laughs> I got a question. Only did our granddaughters. Yeah, our granddaughters. Our granddaughters. <laughs> do you ever get to get up in a helicopter again? And would you do that again if offered the opportunity? Make me an offer. <laughs> I what? think we need an eye in, uh, on the air, eye in the sky, don't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm, Who's flying the helicopter? Who's turning the wrenches Aren't on the helicopter? Oh, yeah. How much I, am I getting I paid? I will, <laughs> I, will, I will offer this up. We need to get him up in the air, mm -hmm. to the on the air, eye in the sky. <laughs> and then what he needs to put is not traffic, but uh, you know local pubs that you guys have frequented <laughs> oh, yeah. for, the, for the last 20 years. Oh, yeah. Pub fly. Yeah, I think we need to do that. <laughs> I right? like it. I, hey, I would offer that. Are you having a great time with KUSI? I mean, I'm, I work with you on weekends as you're, you're the anchor. Uh -huh. I mean, is it fun for you? Because I've watched your career. I remember when you first got into television. How is it right now? When you're not there, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, man. No, we have we have such we have we just have a blast. That's all we do, and and it's fun because whether you're off the air <clears throat> or on the air, at KUSI, all we do is bust each other's chops. You know that. Oh, yeah. I mean, we just it's just and people a lot of times viewers will be like, you guys you guys really don't like each other. Like, no. <laughs> I mean, it's like, like, it's like any other place of work, right? 100%. I mean, we just get to do it on the air. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. How long have you been doing this now? Talk about starting with the very first time you broadcast. How long, how long have you been on the Ooh, air? Ooh, first time I broadcast would have been in Montana in 1986. Wow. Radio? Yeah. Yes, radio. I wasn't even born yet. Then. Yeah, right. What were you doing? <laughs> what were you doing? I started doing radio at the, I, I, I was 20 years old. And I started doing radio at the Great 88 Country KJJR. That's a big, wow. long call time. Dude, right? you know what? Talk you, about you take a kid, a 20-year-old kid from San Diego who's never heard a country song in his life. Or Texas. <laughs> and you sit him in a room and make him play and listen to country music for like yeah. six, seven hours in a row. Do you in Montana. <sighs> Do you oh, no, you don't like it. No, no. I, well, well, country music is different now than it was back then. You know, they all jokes, you know, we play yeah. country music backwards, you get your car back, your dog back. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's like, it's if all you amazing. you play a country song backward, you get your car back and your dog back. <laughs> right. From the <laughs> <wife's> back. <laughs> yeah. You divorce your sister. Time. <laughs> sister, <laughs> sister slash fiance. Hey, Jason. Nobody tells a better joke than Jason. Is a matter. Weren't you like a instructor for a comedy school or a comedy traffic? School? I taught when yeah when I was doing radio out of airplanes doing traffic on the radio. I was uh, an instructor for about six years for the Improv Comedy Club's traffic school down here in San Diego. Oh, I, was I remember. I was a regular. It, it was great. Oh, I had plenty of repeat business. <laughs> A lot of repeat business. Let's bring in our next guest. Do we have? Yes. All right. I stood in line at 7-Eleven when I was 10 years old to get his Slurpee cup. 
I stood in line to get his barbecue when I was 30, 40, and 50. Padres Hall of Famer, give it up for good old number 35, Randy Jones. Can I just I bring you back to a gentler time? <laughs> hey, what the hell am I doing? Yeah. Randy. Randy, you have the best stories. The year was 1971, and a very chubby Bobby Sullivan, ignoring the jeers of the other kids in the playground, <laughs> <laughs> would do nothing but talk about Randy Jones. Boy, oh my like God. you were my childhood here. You, you and I've been on the air a million times. I've told you this story a million times. I love but it's just, it's it's and you and I started working together about 20 years ago. But yeah. but I'll tell you what a what a what a an extreme honor it is to have you on our set again. Fantastic. You know what's scary is I was uh, driving over spring training right at the end of March, uh, and then I realized that wait a minute I I signed with the Padres May 12th. Of 1972. 1972. Wow. wow. Crazy. And I'm going, I have an anniversary coming up. <laughs> 50 years. Can you tell us about that phone call? When you got that phone call when you got drafted? Oh, yeah. I was, I remember in 72, and I I just got off the golf course. <laughs> it was because I'm in, into my senior year, so. Um, and I got drafted, and I thought the Detroit Tigers were going to take me in the in the sixth round is what I've been told. Um, the next thing I know, I got a phone call from uh, Matt Keel and uh, uh, and Marty, you know, you know Keel, and, uh, and they said, you know, where were the Padres and we drafted you in the fifth round? And I went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> where were you living at the time? Where'd you go to high school? Uh, I, I was in, uh, actually, I was in Orange County. Okay. I was near Chapman College yeah. where I went to school. Yeah. I was married, you know, Marie yeah. and I, and, and when the phone rang, you know, so they came over, you know, and of course my dad came over, which did, did no good at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was still gonna get my 500 bucks, okay, let's get real, Yeah. you know. But uh, I wanted the opportunity to play professional baseball, fifth round, I signed, $500, I paid my wife's Volkswagen off. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> wow. You might as well do something like that. Fantastic. Right? Uh, and, you know, hey, it went to work. Lots awesome. more to come. The inimitable Hall of Famer, Randy Jones. Jason Ostell, Jay Pelé, and not a Hall of Famer, Mike Costa. I'm really proud of you guys after we played that gig last night um, that you guys just got up so early to do this show this morning. So fantastic job. I see we're, I see we're missing a few people, but that's okay. Hey, Randy, you are. It's, it's Mate. Mate. Yo, Randy. That's great, man. I love this. Hey, Randy, Aren't these guys right? You have the best baseball stories. Can you tell us a baseball story right now? Uh, <laughs> sure. How uh, about the one you were telling us before yeah. the show out there? That was a pretty good one. I don't know if we're going there. <laughs> I mean, behind the scenes for one thing, all right? Okay. I think, you know, one of the most fun things I ever did is, is, is especially when I pitched, like, 76, you know, facing the Phillies, and we had some great lineup. You know, Schmidt, Lezinski, and all the guys. And, um, but... Greg Lozinski, you know, big left fielder or right fielder, or whatever. Bull. Out, yeah, the bull. Um, just slower to hell running, you know, he's a big boy. <laughs> what are you looking at me for? <laughs> uh, how'd you kind of look like? So, okay, fine. Um, all right, watch your ass. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> <laughs> Tell me. Continue. Yeah. Continue. Uh, so anyway, I think Greg Lozinski had hit into, like, three double plays already. This is 76, and I shut them out three times, the Phillies. <laughs> so we're in the third one, and 
Yeah, and sure as hell, you know, uh, she may get your base hit right. Okay, and any time she may get your base hit, fine. As long as you got a home run. Right. So I got him on first, nobody out, and here comes Lazinski. And I'm on the mound, and I start grinning at him. I just start <laughs> smiling at him. And he's already hit into three double plays. <laughs> And so I'm smiling at him. I've got him cussing at me before. I haven't even thrown him a pitch yet. He's cussing. <laughs> he's yelling at me. I haven't even thrown a pitch. Well, what? You know? And I'm just tickled. And in the second sinker ball I throw him, he hits the perfect ground ball in the shortstop. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I don't know why. I just spun around and looked at this guy. I go, run, Greg, run. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he's running down the line, and would, you know, and he's running a, a, a quick 12 seconds to first base. He's slower. <laughs> okay. Didn't have a chance. Threw him out by about four steps. Yeah. You know, and I'm going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know why I'm yelling at him, and he's just screaming at me. Oh, he was, I'm gonna kill you. Got, you used smack talk before smack talk was around. Oh god, it was hilarious. You know, two outs. You know, that 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 quick. Wow. You know. And so after the game, of course, I beat him 3 death. And then uh, there was a little bar, the Holiday Inn, right across the way, in, you know, at, at, from Veterans Field. Mm -hmm. And so I walk in there to get a little social sparkler. You sure, know, social sparkler. That's the uh, name of the band, by the way. <laughs> oh. Social sparkler. I had a few social sparklers in my life. <laughs> uh, so... So anyway, I, I get to the end of the bar and I look over and, and there's Lozinski sitting over there having a drink, okay? And he's with Maddox, the, their center fielder. And they didn't see me come in, you know, which I couldn't believe with the big fro then, you know? <laughs> um, so anyway, not that I knew Nick the bartender, yeah, but I knew Nick. Yeah, of course okay. you did. I said, Nick, I said, let me buy them around, you know? And so he sent him over a round of drinks, and of course, Lazinski, that big, ugly mug, was <laughs> he goes, who bought this? And he goes, the guy at the end of the bar, and I went. <laughs> <laughs> and there we went again, you know. I had to go over and have a drink with him, but I mean, good Lord. I mean, that's just some of the fun, the competition we had in the old days. Yep. I love that show. Yeah. You him. you got to see him play live as I yeah. Have you, have you guys ever, do you get to oh, see yeah. him live too? Oh my god, yeah. It's amazing. That's when you know, that's when not only did you get the Slurpee Cup, the, the uh, you know, the Dave Winfield <laughs> Slurpee Cup, <laughs> the uh Randy Jones Slurpee Cup, but they had Bat Night back yeah. then. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> let's let's give size. everybody a Billy Club that bat. says Padres yeah. on it with a Randy Jones signature. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> And then the crowd in unison would start, yeah. you know, oh, and yeah. it was medieval, it yeah, sounded it like, you know? <laughs> right. That was the walk But he, he was appointment baseball. Sure. When we were kids. If oh, yeah. You, yeah. you know, your parents came home and said, we've got tickets, mm -hmm. and he was pitching? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, in the bullpen right there. Christmas in June. The bullpen you could look down upon over there. It, yeah. It, and you, would, you, you used to have conversations and such. You know, not long conversations, but you'd actually interact with the fans. Sure. And and you don't see that a lot today. I mean, it was really kind of, it was very, very, it was, baseball was closer back then. Because, oh, very much You so. know, you had guys like Bill Lee from the Expo, you know, doing transactions in left field for, <laughs> for, for certain import-export goods. I mean, you, you, I mean, you had Gary Templeton smoking cigarettes during, uh, during shorts, during, during uh, uh, you know, warm-ups. When, I, and when stuff I was like a little that. kid, I remember Dave Winfield coming from the dugout to right field. And he would just run out there or jog out there, and we would go, Dave, Dave, and he would wave. Yeah, exactly. So cool. I, don't, I mean, there's some interaction, Dave, but not like it was before. Did you have you ever, did you ever get a chance to interview him before you worked together? Because I know you guys worked in the same building a long time. Uh, no, no, wow. it was only it was only after until he had long retired, and I was given that media credential did I get to know uh -huh. Randy really well. In fact, a couple years ago, I was up in the, uh, there was a, it was opening day in the press box. <laughs> and we're all just standing around, you know, <laughs> sitting on our thumbs like, you know, media guys do. And Randy comes in and he just yells out, hey, D-head. <laughs> and I'm the only one that turns and goes, hey, what's up, Randy? <laughs> What does that tell you? And he goes, gets them every time. Gets them every time. So, Dave, you, you know, I'll, yeah. I'll, it's going to work. It's, yeah. it, it always works. 
Dave, I want to ask you about baseball these yeah. days. Are you uh, are you are you still a baseball fan? I am a huge baseball fan. Have, uh, how much has baseball changed in the last? Oh, it's changed five years. Oh, dramatically. Versus ten years versus forty years. Oh, d- d- dramatically, it's changed. It's funny, Randy and I were talking about it right before we walked out here. How you don't see guys like Randy who get just get out. You're seeing guys that you have to throw at least ninety three at a high school just to even get a look. And you're seeing so many guys, they look for that perfect guy that is 6'5", 6'6", that throws 96 to 100 miles an hour. But they're all carbon copies of the same guy. And whereas a guy like Randy, no offense, would not receive a contract today. Dude. But Randy is the kind of guy that I think every team needs because it's such a change of pace that there's no way these players can adjust. And so we were just discussing, saying we're waiting for one of those 30 major league teams to say, we need one of those guys on our roster. And I used to have back in the days guys that threw the knuckleball that kind of changed things up a little bit. But the way Randy would continue to get slower and slower on purpose with his speed, just try and get you out on your front foot to ground out to easy outs. Exactly. You don't, not, you, we, you don't see it anymore. And we don't see enough characters either. I mean, there's no books no. coming out like by Gaylord Perry called Me and the Spitter. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean see, there's Everyone's the too characters. worried about their brand. It's, no, it's true. It's, I mean, it's, you, know, you know, it's all buttoned up. I mean, Goose Gossage was a character. You oh, know, that, I mean, the, you well, saw. You, we well, used to have some personality. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. And you don't you don't see it anymore. And uh, well, because somebody's going to do it. Some manager's going to do that. You know, you get five a five man rotation that number three spot. You know, just slip it a Randy Jones right there. Yeah. Throwing about 80, 85. That would be beautiful. You know, that would be beautiful. Speeds, get, you know, instead of throwing harder, throws slower. That would change the sport. Oh. But it's going to take a veteran manager. It would have to be a Dusty Baker. Exactly. Or Russo. It's it to, Joe Madden. Somebody exactly. that doesn't have anything to lose. Yeah. yeah and you, and you wouldn't have, like, Joe's butcher shop uh, on your shoulder like they do at the Padres. Or is that the <laughs> Motorola? I can't. Motorola. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna, pretty hey, sure they're going to have that thing where you where you hit the you hit the cow and you get a free steak at, uh, at Petco. Hey. <laughs> hey, after the break, after the break, I want to ask Jason Ostell about his story about Glenn Campbell and Andy Gibb. Wow. <laughs> I won't be here for that second. That sounds uncomfortable. <laughs> OTA is on the air. Stand by. Wow. Big show today. Mike Costa is our co host for today. Jason Ostell is here. Dave Pelle. And the Hall of Famer Randy Jones, it is on the air. Can you name that right. song? Have you heard that song before? Yes, song? I have. Do you know what it's called? Uh, no, I don't. It's called Musicology. Oh, a guy named What? Prince. Yeah. Prince. Come on. Prince. Really? It's music. the one who recommended that. Yeah, song. Exactly. <laughs> I wasn't really listening. But yeah, they, they do a, great, <laughs> they do a great version. They do a great version. How's it make you guys feel? Fantastic, right? <laughs> Thanks. Ah, Thanks. Ah, are Thanks, they still Tommy. here? <laughs> Perfect. You know what? But I do want to say this. The Sully Band, I mean... They sound better that's the without best, me. In my opinion, that's the best band in San Diego. Oh, you mean the, like this one here? I'm sorry. Uh, let me put this. Oh, the thing that says the best live band? Oh, yeah. No, no. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, like Steve uh, Ferroni oh, said oh, on the show. Speaking of, uh, oh, my gosh. Come on. Come on. Here I comes love me some thing. me. Hey. <laughs> All right, Jason. The other day we were just talking, you know, during commercials at KUSI, and you said you were a bellman? What yeah. were you? Yeah. A bellman at where? How'd you get Hank Bauer's helmet? <laughs> <laughs> he dropped okay. it off in hopes of getting on the show. Didn't work. Look at that. Re- that was the reaction I was looking for right there. There it is. Okay. Um, no, I was, uh, I, to, to echo what this man said, what Mike said is, um, when we were kids, if we were lucky enough to get tickets to go to a Padres game, the first question was always, is Randy Jones pitching? Yep. Yes. Okay, this is growing up in South Escondido, and if you're lucky, he was pitching. You're referring to my senior year of high school, uh, right down on the corner of Citricato Parkway and Escondido Boulevard was the Hotel Escondido. Uh And the Hotel Escondido, I was the head bellman there. Wow. And they used to have concerts out at the Wild Animal Park. And all the artists who who played there, yeah, they were out. 45, 40 miles away. That's right. Right, exactly. Well, we were the nearest (laughs) hotel. road. (laughs) No electricity. It was the closest place. We were were the nearest hotel. Literally, the 150 degrees. So (laughs) so I got got to know, like, the the managers and stuff would come, and I'd take care of them, and they'd say, okay, we want you to, you know, take care of the the artists when they get, okay, whatever. And so in one summer, I don't know why you like this story so much. (laughs) (laughs) In one summer, I worked for... Andy Gibb, Glenn Campbell, Helen Reddy, Donnie and Marie Osmond, and uh, they were. What, Gordon Lightfoot was booked? <laughs> uh, I guess. Anne Murray. Anne Murray. 
Oh. So anyway, um, but but the, the the funny thing is that you were talking about the time Glenn Campbell was coming, and I knew oh, yeah. he was coming, and his guitar arrived before he did. Oh, what is it? And do? this is when he had his own TV show kind of thing, and I recognize as soon as I go, well, what did I do? I took it in the back, I opened it up, and I got a pick, and I take a selfie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> take a selfie. There were no selfies. Oh, then. Yeah. This is seventy one. Yeah, this, so so <laughs> I, I'm like, I, I've just watched him play this guitar on TV last night, and I'm here playing it. This is pretty cool. Wow. So anyway. It turns out the hotel has since been, before they leveled the hotel, they turned it into a, an old folks, a rest home. Mm -hmm. He bought a house right across the street from the hotel. The guy I used to want to see pitching when we found out when we were kids. Oh, we were love going, it. Love now it. he lives right down the street from the house I grew up in. Oh, okay. No and, and, and no, so they, before love they it. tore it down, but Randy, would, I was just, we happened to be talking. This is what, almost 15 years ago, probably. Yeah, 20, I, about 20 years ago. Something but. like that. And I said, and he to described where he lived. And I said, do you live across this? And, and all the, everything fell into line. And I go, dude, you live right there. And at the time, he, he was telling me about how the, the older people who were kind of bridging into senility or kind of dementia, they would walk across the street and go out to his pool and like lay in the lounge chair. I, I, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I had wake a, up in the morning. I, I'm sure. You have visitors. I mean, they, I had a couple of acres, so it wasn't fenced in, a bunch of fruit trees. You know, and the whole front was all grass and lawn that I took care of. And I was, and I, I come out there one morning, and there's a little Italian guy sitting in the chair. <laughs> And I'm looking, going, how you doing? I, I didn't understand a word he said, but yeah, good to have you here. You know, I had to go over there. And, Perfect. Yeah, would you come get your guy? <laughs> hey, so you know, it was hilarious. Do you remember? So I remember going into San Diego Stadium, built in 1969. Oh yeah. For 25 million dollars, 100% taxpayer funded, mm -hmm. uh, which made San Diego a little nicer place to live, in my opinion, because of if you think of. Uh, in terms of Padre games, Major League Baseball, uh, All-Star Game, uh, a Super Bowl, uh, Cheap Trick, um, Street Seat even one time. I mean, I, I haven't mentioned the Chargers even once yet, have I? It was no. a civic asset. Gave right? the Aztecs a home? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, you know, they even had the, you know, the uh, uh, Billy Graham thing they went on there. It was a refuge for the Cedar Fires. So do you remember, though, when you were a kid going into San Diego Stadium mm -hmm. for, a, for, a, for a Padre game? Mm -hmm. There was nothing like it as a kid. That place will never be. I mean, Petco, look, Petco Park's fantastic. And for me, it's teeming with economic activity. I get so excited every time I see that. Say, if we had a stadium, we're going to make some money here in this town. And it's a great experience, but it's not like the old. It's no. not like the old. Or just where they were yelling, on. selling peanuts. And they were doing the, the whole thing, and they had like three things you could buy to eat. Yep. <laughs> Four, if you count a beer. Here's what so I you remember. had beer, soda, hot dog. Popcorn, yep. peanuts, five, five things. Five That's it. Or driving down the 805 and looking over. Yeah. And just, oh, sure. Yeah. Just going, whoa, there's yep. the stadium. Right. Man, and then the Marlboro sign. Yeah. Right. Ah. The, the yeah. Marlboro sign. What do we go? We went from San Diego Stadium Houston. to Jack Murphy. Jack Murphy Stadium to Qualcomm, I believe. Qualcomm, that's right. Yeah. I, SDCC. And then, the yeah. Randy, I don't know if you would remember this because you're concentrating on playing. I'm sure Dave and Jason do. There was a guy who would used to sell the the Evening Tribune. Yeah. The green paper. The green, the green one. Paper. The yeah. green one. The green and one. He, <laughs> and he had an old silk Padre starter jacket that was dirtier than oh. hell, and he wore a batting glove, and he smoked like these Eve cigarettes like they were the <laughs> And he would and he and he would sell his newspapers at the game, and then once he was out, he would raise his hands, and everybody in the section would give him an ovation. Oh my gosh! And it's it's you pitching, and that oh, guy wow. selling his newspapers so at the yeah. stadium. Those from, are the days, though. You could bring a jug in, like no, you could bring a, a gallon jug. of beer. Yeah, you could bring a jug oh, yeah. with you oh, on yeah. bat night. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Perfect. They <laughs> did half a gallon of milk and yep. put beer in it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that stopped at an Aztec game when, you know, the students started oh, I, from the top row. Hey, there were some great games, though. There was some great <laughs> In the 70s. Yeah, Jesse Freitas was the quarterback for yeah, Aztec. I was there, man. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love it. Fantastic. It's a, was, it was, it's, a, it was, it's a great part. It's woven into the fabric of what San Diego is. Sure. Oh, yeah. But, um, well, it was. It, yeah, I mean, it was. It, it was now we got a, a very you know, small I'm, stadium. I got to bring one thing up. What I like is in, in doing radio and stuff with Dave Pollard, in, in, in everything that we've done. Sure. And to turn out and find out his passion for the game and what he's done for the kids yeah. mm -hmm. here Amazing. in San Diego, I commend you, man. I appreciate it. I, I really mean that. You know, it's, it's, it's funny. I got a quick story to say about Randy. That well, hold on. This is how we keep him in the parking lot. Stay right there. Okay. Love it. We have another one. We are continuing with On the Air. I will tell you, though, 
The greatest memories of my childhood have to do with you. <laughs> OTA, on the air, is on the air. Let's see, see my new license plate? Come on, that's dedication. I mean, based upon all our memories. I guess. Okay, I wrote that. If you guys forget it. Maybe the best show. The be in terms of memories, maybe the best show we've had. Because honestly. This one? Oh, yeah, come on. <laughs> because we're bringing. Bring, no, honestly. Bring, How many times you said that? Never. Couldn't remember. <laughs> You're going to be a Hey, Randy. Uh, if there's a big concert or something going on at Petco Park, does Randy Jones, who has a mural at Petco Park of yourself, do you need a ticket? Do you need a ticket to anything at Petco Park? No. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I roll it. I haven't had one. <laughs> Damn. No. I know. I've, I've tried to pull the I know Randy Jones. Well, you know, I finally got, I got tired of parking out in D2 and the left. <laughs> so I finally decided I just, I just pull into the player lot. Do you Good really? for you. Well, gonna... After 50 years, I yeah. deserve it, I think. Absolutely. Once a player, always yep. a player. They yep. should have a Randy Jones placard that you can purchase to be able to park in the in, the, in a lot. <laughs> I agree. Right? I you agree. I, I, hashtag, I know Randy Jones. That's it. That's <laughs> and I love what Randy said about Dave Palais. You and bet? I agree. When you came into KUSI a few weeks ago with, with those players, your yeah. kids, yeah. it was so awesome. You saw the love in your heart. Yeah. Where did that come from? Um, I always wanted to be a professional baseball player. I think like so many other kids. I didn't have uh, exactly the same support that we supply now. Um, I don't know if I ever had the talent to, to do it, but I always had the dream to want to be around professional baseball. So I, I came to San Diego in 89, went to San Diego State, met my wife, uh, had two kids, and then we um, got into sports media early on because I didn't know what I was going to do without chasing the dream. And so as a 21-year-old kid, I got into interning at a radio station and one day I lucked out where the phone rang and it was ESPN in Connecticut and they needed someone to cover the Padres Braves game and there's awesome. nobody in the building and they said, will you do it? Awesome. And I said, yeah, I'll do it. How many and times so, have we said that's how it works? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know what? Career in radio has to do with just being there. You, you know what's right. funny? It's the it's guy who's there. Right. Well, we're, what right. station were you at? I was, I was at Extra 690. Wow. And, uh, on Pacific Highway? Yeah, Pacific Highway. Wow. And right. so in, in my mind, I thought of what Oprah Winfrey said, that she got asked to go out and do a story, and they said, you know how to run a camera? And she said she had no idea, but she told them yes. She said yes. yes. And right. her whole life turned by saying yes. So I kind of try to sit, remember what she did. Went and covered it, and they said, hey, that was fantastic. You want to do the rest of the year? And that went into the Lakers. That went into doing broadcasting for ESPN for the last 30 years. And so being in San Diego, the city has treated me great. There's a love-hate thing on Twitter, of course, that Mike's a big part of. He doesn't, he doesn't help out a lot. But, but the, the city, More hate. The city has been outstanding. I know people would freak out when they saw Los Angeles on my sweatshirt. But the, um, overall, the city has been outstanding. Tony Gwynn is the, the reason that I lasted so long, because he yeah. taught me how to talk to players. I used yeah. to get cussed at every night. And it's because I called everybody Mr. And then he said, you got to start calling guys by their names. So you just go up to him and say, Randy, you got a second? And that, that translated into my career. Well, Randy has reached out from the very beginning, has been one of our biggest fans, Jeff and, and me on our show. You and since You mean Jefe and Diablo? Exactly right. <laughs> so when we got our first show in 98, we, we followed Randy and, and Hank, and, and we got an opportunity to go on there and during that Padre run in 98. But he's been so great. So the, the story I was going to share was my love for baseball. Well, I, I had my first son at 22 years old. And we just got let go at KFMB. So I'm at without a job. I just bought a house. I'm afraid I'm going to lose my house. Randy's doing one of his camps that he's done for years in San Diego that he doesn't take credit for. And we just show up. And Randy says, I'm going to scholarship your son. And I swear, if wow. it wasn't for that, I don't know if I would have had the passion for it to help the kids out. My son, the passion for the game, he opened a door for my family. But I, having Randy here means a lot to me. I, I love Randy. Randy like Jones for president, member. damn it. Yeah. Ah. Come on. And so I, I followed his footsteps <laughs> for what he's given back for years. And you have coached. You, I didn't know until you told us out there before the show. You have coached 140 baseball teams. 142 baseball teams. 142 wow. yeah. baseball teams. Absolutely. Incredible. Will you coach the no, 100 softball team? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 been a lot of fun. It's, but you'll stay up all night long watching four games. I, I do. I, I spend about eight hours a day with the team I'm with now, and then uh, at Benito Vista, and then I'll 
tape four games a night, and I'll watch live the Padres, I'll watch the Dodgers, Angels, and a team from the East Coast. And wow. the reason you said, though, was what I found very compelling. You say, I'm looking for things I haven't seen before. I look for something I've never seen before. That's oh. what I was, that's, that's what I'm watching. That's so, awesome. but, but, I, the, but I love the, the game. The problem is, <laughs> there's always something you've never seen before. I say, if Vince that's Kelly can say it, then it well, yeah, happen well, to me, yeah. too. Uh, that's right. This show, check that box. I got a question for Mike after all that. Why are you so mean to him? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Costa, how has baseball changed since you were a kid? Because you've been in the, you were just a fan as a kid, but you've been the inside for a long time. Yeah. So tell me, like, the last game you went to versus the first game you went to. Oh, my God. And just knowing what's going on. You know, all I, have to, all I have to do is, is talk about when it was photo day at San Diego Stadium and the players would come out onto the field. Yeah. And you could walk right up to them, yeah. and it was everyone with their little Polaroids or Instamatics and stuff, yeah. Yeah. and take pictures with them, and it was great. And you knew not to ask for an autograph because they wanted to make sure everyone got a picture. Yeah, right. And I remember you guys were playing the Reds one time, and Ken Griffey and George Foster are out in the outfield warming up. And I walked <laughs> up to Ken Griffey, Mr. Griffey, can I have a picture? Sure. Wow. And I walk up to George Foster, get the hell out of here, didn't want anything to do with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, and, and Willie McCovey, my all-time favorite, yeah. favorite baseball player ever, sitting there and taking a picture with Big Mac and looking up at him. Is, yeah. Yeah. That doesn't happen nowadays. And, and I realize because of security concerns and all that stuff, but it's just the, the moat between the action on the yeah, field and right. the players and the fans is so great. But now. you know what's interesting? I agree with that. Fernando Tatis Jr., though, has sort of broken down that fence a little bit mm -hmm. with sure. his interactions not only mm -hmm. on and off the field, but during the game, he mm -hmm. tends to not just go down the stairs. Yeah. He tends to hang out over here for a minute. You ever notice oh, that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, play with, and then he goes – and I think, I think when, when people see how popular he is – uh, not just because of his, his play. I think there's other players who are going to catch on to that. And, and that, I, I painted with somewhat of a broad brush. You, like, there's a lot of players, and I know you love the Dodgers, and but there's, <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> counting, counting the Dodgers. Yeah. No, I'm not going to count the Dodgers. But all other baseball teams, no, Dodgers too, you do see it. And if you follow social media, you see guys, and they're always stopping. They're, they don't go into the stands to take a, fa a picture with a fan, but, man, they stop, and they take a picture, mm -hmm. and you, you only hear the bad stuff, like everything in life. You just see the bad stuff, hear about the bad stuff. You don't see enough of the good. Do you know, you and I have talked with this on Big Biz about that Marlon Phillies game um, <laughs> that was 0-0 and the temper tantrum that happened in the last, which I want to see more of that, too, yeah. because that kind of emotion was, you know, that blew up Twitter, and, and Mike and I have talked about this on the air, whereby when you watch a baseball game now, you have to have your Twitter companion here because oh, yeah. there's as much entertainment going on here yeah. as there is. In the, oh. it, it's almost like having the scorebook. By the way, those people that were keeping score when you were pitching are still there with best on a bunch of kids. They're there from the beginning until 10 p.m. This is your day, so right. I wish you all a very, very happy Mother's Day. How do we say it like this? Please make present to all your princess. You can't even drive and change the radio button. Look at this guy. <laughs> oh. You got more people in the band than you have on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, the biggest expense is, you know, right behind you. It's <laughs> a great that band. We, they, we cleared this. We cleared the. Uh, we cleared everybody's seat last night. We played that song at the Elton <laughs> concert series. That was good. Nice job. Uh, we have a show tonight, but you can't come to. It. I don't want to talk about. It. But uh, text Jesse Lozano over at 94.1. He'll tell you. Did you ever, Randy? Did you ever pitch to uh, William Ace or Henry Aaron? Oh yes. What, what, was, what was that like? He oh, said with Stop, guys. Come oh on. really? You know, this is a rerun. <laughs> You know, first big league hit I ever gave up, home run to Willie Mays. No, no kidding. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it is awesome. That's what it is. Awesome. It is awesome. Cool. I, I think it's a better story that you didn't strike him out and he hit a home run. Yeah. They, they haven't found the ball yet. <laughs> <laughs> Did he just smoke it? it oh, yeah. It's just, it was at Shea Stadium. He was with a Met yeah. at the time, end of his career. And I got cocky, I guess. It was one and two count. And I, I threw him a sinker ball down and in. What a dope. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think they, I don't think they found that, but he just crushed it. You know? Oh, and man. then there's Don Zimmer's my manager. 
And and that was just a little relief up here to get my feet wet in the big leagues in 73. And, and four days later, I got my first start back in San Diego against the Atlanta Braves. Wow. And who'd you face? Hank Aaron. No <laughs> way! <laughs> That's right, first inning. Really? Hank went deep. He took me deep. <laughs> <laughs> I would have given up two hits in my career. And the first one was a home run to Willie Mays. The second one was a home run to Hank Aaron. Oh, wow. Awesome. Wow. And I remember running after the first inning, I got out of that. I ended up losing the ball game three to one, uh, went seven innings. But you know, Zimmer looked at me and goes, Boy, Lefty, you don't mess around, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I already had, I had Willie Mays and Hank Aaron in my book. I, mean, I hadn't even been yeah. in the big leagues a week. You've been telling us stories from out there since even before the show started. You know what blows me away? Is every time you tell a story, you can tell where you were, who was there, what the pitch count was, how many innings you went. It's like, yeah, isn't we, that amazing? We, we, yes. never, we never forget any of that. And Clearly. I mean, there, there's hitters I'm still getting arguments with about a certain pitch. <laughs> you know, it used to be Rusty Staub or even oh. Pete Rules, I'll argue with him. That was a strike. <laughs> <laughs> Bet you it wasn't. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. come on. Well, All right. that's a, it probably <laughs> wasn't the hell with it. I wanted it. Exactly. Hey, no. before we go on, I want to invite someone else up here to the set. Mary, Mary, come over here. Seriously. Come on, Mary. MBG. Have a seat right here. MBG. Hi. Mary All Bergano. Right. Hi. <laughs> Sit right there. I like that. Hi, gentlemen. Hi. Hi, Hi man. Hi. Now classing up the joint. Wait, can we do a show sometime on... Uh... Wait a minute. Oh, here we go. Oh. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, Happy oh, Mother's Day. You're the only mother in this room. Yeah, well... <laughs> I can think it. Well, huh? yeah. <laughs> Kaz, Kaz's first him, name is Mother. They do call me Den Mother. <laughs> you are kind of a Den Mother. I'm kind of a Den Mother. I keep everyone you in tweet line. That? Happy Mother. And this, and this I... is from James East. James hey, East. Wow. There we go. What what and the band, the Sully band. James and the band. These are my favorites. Well done, oh kids. my God. Hey. Putting up with you guys. Have you ever been to a Padre game? <sighs> I grew up going to the Padre games. Oh my God, I love. And what do you love? Randy what, Jones what, what, barbecue. Yeah. There you go. So, so your biggest memory of uh, saying a baseball is Randy Jones barbecue. That My is, mom too. I'm you know just what saying. What it was is that when I was really like early tweens, I would walk around. You know the the walk the escalator up, uh, or not escalator, but the roundabout. And yeah, my yeah. friends and I would just go look at. Try to pick up boys, actually, is what we did. Uh, but I loved Padres. I still do. Yeah. I'm a big, diehard fan. Yeah. Maybe, maybe three players. Kirk Bavakwa. <laughs> I mean, from today. Uh, oh, from today? Yeah. Maybe three Top players. Tatis yeah. Jr. What's his first name? Fernando. OK, good. Right. That's one. Help me out, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Machado. You know three Padres. Machado. Kurt, Machado. Kurt Bavakwa, Randy Jones, and uh, Fernando Tatis here. That's three. Steve she Garvey. Got it. She Steve, Steve Garvey. 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 Hey. I'm bringing it back hey, from the day. Big radio show, Garvey and so, Company. You know what? Yeah, I'm yeah. a mother of teen daughters now. I don't have time to watch Padres right now. Do they? Sorry. Are they sports? And things? I hang out. I have to handle all of this, yeah. so I don't have. Can to you say? Can them. you tell us one more time so we can get some donations on this Leukemia and Lymphoma Society? Yes. Interview? Go to SullyEntertainmentGroup.com. Okay. And you can. Or SullyBand.com. SullyBand.com. Any yep. of our oh, websites, actually. Um, yeah, dig into those while I talk. Um, and you can just click the red donate button, and yeah. you can donate to. Sully's Man of the Year Le for cancer. Leukemia. We've all been touched by cancer. I, yeah. ca I can't believe when I started doing this, thinking how many people uh, we've been touched by cancer. And, and I will tell you this also, if you type in KUSI in the donation box, yes. you, uh, you're entering a chance to come a VIP experience, which again is a, is a juice box and a, uh, <laughs> a VIP. Whatever, snacks, hey, food truck. Whatever, whatever snacks we have in the cupboard over there. We usually get a food truck. Yeah, there's like a, there's like a three-year-old thing of jerky there, so you got to come hang out. <laughs> so, hey, are, granola bar from my house. <clears throat> are those donuts or what? Yeah, those are, yeah. The, come on. for it. Bunt These cakes, bunt mini cakes, bunt cakes. Friend. Oh, come on. Mini yeah. bunt Oh, yeah. They're... That was my term of endearment for Randy. <laughs> we were on the air together. Hey, Bunt Cake. Bunt Cake? Bunt B U N D T. You guys can't even open this thing. Why don't you op open it? Here, j make yourself useful. Hey, today was a great show. Um, before, listen, before we get out of here, uh, Randy, um, uh, when's the next time uh, you're going to go to a ball game? Because I know a ton of people would love to see you. Yeah, you I'm, just, I'm you're always there. Every day game, you know, or every every home game, I'm hanging around the we're ball. We're going to chase party. you down there. Like, here this wow. Week. And Dave Palais, on behalf of all my friends. Man. 
you know, Joe Loera, Paul Segura, I just want to say thank you for doing this show because they love you. Oh, yeah. thank you very much. Come back in time. Maybe bring, maybe bring, maybe bring Hefe of the Hefe and Diablo I, show. I can, but yes. you got to get Mike up. All right. <laughs> Jason Ostell. No, you'll co-host. Yeah. We'll put Jeff there. That's right. That's right. We'll put him on ice. <laughs> Jason Ostell, he'll be back tomorrow morning, Sunday morning on Good Morning San Diego. Yeah. Yes, I will. Love you, man. Who's, wow. your favorite, who's your favorite guest to interview? Just asking for a friend. <laughs> oh, man. That's... Tina Forte. Sammy Hagar. Oh, yeah. Okay, then. That's not the answer oh, I was oh. looking for. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Okay, my work oh, is done here. Oh, no, yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jim, Jason. Um, I love it. And Mike Costa. Mike, thanks for guest hosting. Uh, it was, it, it's been awesome. And, and Randy and Jason, it's been great to see you guys. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and congratulations on your new gig with uh, Thank you Big very Big much. Show. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, congratulations. Don't mess it and up. And don't miss these two guys <laughs> on, on Twitter. Bar Rescue. Uh, uh, they were on Bar uh, Rescue. Oh, did you rescue. see what he was oh. drinking on Bar <laughs> Rescue? He it had one best. of those Fastinabla shirts up with the oh, little, yeah. and he had a pink squirrel. No, well, when they came over with the light underneath, Mike realized he was drinking bugs the entire time. <laughs> and then once it was infected, he goes, to give me an urgent care right now. It was outstanding. <laughs> and happy Mother's Day tomorrow. See you next day. 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 day.